Welcome everyone to today's Process Optimization Academy session focused on process optimizations pre-built integration with workforce optimization. Now, one of the biggest advantages you get by taking an in-platform approach to process mining and, and really any in-platform approach to, to most things is the integrations with value-add solutions to create a more complete experience. And I even I hate to use the term integration because it's all on one platform. So I'm gonna to try to start saying just connections or something other than integration as we move forward. So uh, in addition to the connection with workforce optimization that we'll be covering today, uh, process optimization has ties to things like performance analytics, continual improvement management, automation center, and predictive intelligence, all of which are key to creating a more efficient closed loop continual improvement experience. And we're gonna be covering uh, some of those other connections um, in, in future Academy sessions. So look forward to those. Now, before we get to workforce optimization, we have to get the Academy housekeeping out of the way. So for our newcomers and for those who have stumbled upon one of our recordings for the, the first time. So the purpose of these sessions are to help us all get better educated on ServiceNow's in-platform process mining capabilities. We'll provide how-tos, practical guidance and use cases, some product updates like this session today. Um, and just as a group, we're here to exchange ideas and collaborate so we all continue to get better. Now, how these sessions will work, we'll have a scheduled topic that we'll cover usually for the first 30 to 40 minutes or so, then we open it up for questions on that specific topic for the session. Then we'll open it up for questions above and beyond the set topic for the day, sort of an office hours type of feel. Um, these sessions are recorded, as you know, and eventually they get posted on the community so they're there to share with friends and family. And then finally, just feel free to post your questions in the Q&A section. I haven't figured out the muting and unmuting of everyone. So uh, use the Q&A session to start. If you want to kind of chime in and add something to the conversation, let me know in the chat and then I'll mute, unmute you or allow you to speak, I think is the option, which is really weird. Uh, makes me feel uncomfortable. And then for situations where we don't have an answer for your question immediately, we'll follow up and post them to the process optimization community, or maybe we'll use them as a, a topic for future sessions. I know we've added some sessions to the uh, the schedule based on some of the questions that have come up in, in uh, prior academy sessions. Um, and then finally, reminder, if you have ideas for future sessions, please put them in the chat or post them in the community. I'm starting to run out of ideas myself. Uh, so this is the slide that says anything we say and do here today can't be held against us in the court of law. It's also the slide that says as part of these conversations, if we make any forward looking statements about what might be coming in future releases, you should take them as such and make no decisions based on them because they're always subjects to change. I'm sure you've now read the fine print. For the first time, uh, I've got a guest speaker today. So you will not have to listen to me babble on the entire time. You're going to get the opportunity to hear from someone else. And with me today is Andy Creer, uh, Director of Product Management for Workforce um, Optimization. I'll, Andy, I'll let you introduce yourself. I probably should have done that without um, introducing you already. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks, Dan. I think as soon as you said you weren't going to be speaking the whole time, we lost a couple of attendees. But uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> thank you so much for having me here. It's a, a true honor to, to participate in this with you and and uh, evangelize for some of the great work we're doing here. I am, as Dan mentioned, a director of product management here in the ITSM group in ServiceNow. And for the last few years, I've been focusing on workforce optimization, which I'll get the chance to tell you guys all about and give you a little spiel still there. But a couple, I guess, uh, uh, you know, fun facts about me. Um, I live Andy, you kind of, yeah, Andy, you're kind of dropping on us there. Bird connection. Yeah, bad connection for Andy. Andy, hopefully we can get you back. Um, but as we wait for you to, to get back, we're just going to, I'm going to move to the. Oh, look at that. It there just you go. Popped, popped right in and out. Well, I, anyways, sorry about, about that, Dan. <laughs> uh enough fun facts about me i guess uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> they were not fun at all they were they were silent silent fun facts oh uh, no well okay uh anyways yeah i'm a product manager here on the itsm group here at ServiceNow. now uh been here for over four years um all things workforce optimization and uh just a couple of things about me um yeah i was just saying i love i love uh 
eating tacos. That's my favorite pastime outside of uh, playing music and uh, and watching baseball. So there you go. We've got two things in common. Perfect. And I learned two new things about you. All right. So what we're going to do today, as always, we'll do the quick process mining refresher. Two minutes to kind of give you the, the 101 of what process mining is. Is It's just yeah, a new muscle or first exposure to process mining. Uh, then we'll move over to Andy's content, the Better Together Workforce and optimi Process Optimization. So you get a little bit of the what and why. Um, and, and kind of then we'll talk about kind of, and again, I use the word integration, but the connection between workforce optimization and process optimization. We'll get to your questions. We'll talk a little bit about how to get started, some resources, and then share where, where we're going in the future. So as always, uh, we'll start with the two minutes of process mining one-on-one for our newcomers. With everything we do, there's a designed and desired path in our minds for how it should work and how things should play out, whether it be planning a, a webinar like these, academy sessions, or a business process. And when you design things, you're going to design for efficiency as well as completeness to provide the best experience possible for everyone. Unfortunately, what we design isn't always what ends up happening in reality. What in-platform process mining or process optimization allows us to do is use the audit log data that is generated as records move through a given workflow on the ServiceNow, plat ServiceNow platform uh, to create a visual representation of what is actually happening within a given process on the platform. And this new level of visibility is gonna help us accelerate our ability to identify inefficiencies, non-conformant process activities and improvement opportunities. So, Process mining gives us the ability to answer process questions that, you know, in the past have been very challenging to answer for a lot of us. So where traditional analytics will allow us to answer a lot of the what questions about our processes, process mining helps us answer a lot more of the whys. So things like, hey, where is our process stuck? Where is the unnecessary rework happening? Where are tickets or cases or incidents ping-ponging between groups and where aren't we conforming to the processes we designed? All these types of questions, most of our customers have been trying to answer for years and they've been difficult to answer and act upon. And now, as you've seen in future sessions or former sessions, prior sessions is the best way to say it. Now, the answers to these questions are available for most of us in a, in a couple of clicks. Uh, we like to say that process optimization is going to get you to the why behind all those KPIs. Actually, this week I was at a couple of snugs and somebody came up to me and said, hey, you should start saying KPYs. And I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of catchy. Maybe I will start saying KPYs. All right. At this point, I'm going to shut up and, and pass the session over to Andy to take us through the why and what of workforce optimization and the pre-built connection with, with process optimization. So I'm going to stop sharing. Andy, feel free to share and, and take it away. Thanks, Dan. I uh, had to move a little bit because I had another disconnect here. So let's hope that that does not happen again. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right. The best laid plans, of course. So let's get into this. I'm going to, uh, you know, take a moment here to shamelessly plug uh, a product that I've been working on for quite some time, like I mentioned. Uh, can you all see the screen okay? I can, yes. Great, great. Okay. So you're probably asking, okay, I came here to learn about process optimization. Uh, you know, I came here to listen to Dan. What is this guy doing here and what the heck is workforce optimization? Uh, so I'll, I'm here to answer that for you. Workforce optimization is something that we actually got started on right around the same time as process optimization. And it's really a tool that we've built and designed focusing on teams and managers and developing high performing engaged service teams. So you might be familiar with some of these solutions out there that solve for call centers where you have you know, quality management and phone integrations, but we wanna take a lot of those same concepts and apply them to other service teams, right? We saw a lot of great things happening in workforce engagement and learning and coaching that we wanted to, to, to really bring to the platform uh, because this is where all the work is happening, right? So this product, again, focuses on quality, efficiency, team satisfaction, skill growth, smart scheduling, and again, with the backbone of that continual improvement uh, uh, kind of mantra and North Star that we've always got here at ServiceNow. So I had the pleasure, you know, this is pre-COVID of doing a lot of travel and meeting with a lot of customers and talking to them about their pain points. And uh, as fun as it was, it was really painful to see some of the solutions that folks were using out there. Everything from, you know, Excel sheets, obviously, that we all kind of lean on 
but you know, dashboards and Tableau and custom applications built on ServiceNow, custom applications that were built in 1987 and still running on somebody's computer to do scheduling. There was just tons of different places out there. And we were shocked because these were all ServiceNow customers. And we were saying, why are you pulling all this data from, you know, why, why are you looking at all these disparate systems? This should all be in the platform. And it really got us started and thinking about how can we better solve, not just for incident management, but for service management uh, holistically and, and really give this solution, not just to agents, but to the managers of these teams as well. So, you know, as we were out here talking to folks and, and learning more about these teams, we started to, to kind of have these clusters of folks and, and, and these persona groups that we identified. And this has been a really helpful way for, and, and lens for us to look at these groups. But uh, the, the main personas that we focus on workforce optimization are the managers. These are the folks that the team reports to. Uh, they're responsible for approvals and responsible for the overall output of the team, right? So they really do. They care about the, the KPIs. They care about how teams are, are performing. They're looking for process improvements all the time, you know, and looking for ways to deflect, you know, uh, uh, mundane and repetitive work off of their team. So they're working on more meaningful things. We have the team lead. This is somebody who's been on the team for quite some time and uh, knows all the ins and outs, knows how to get people unstuck, knows how to help folks out. And they're constantly looking at what's coming on, what's going on right now. Sometimes this person is also a dispatcher, right? But they're really kind of making sure everybody's, everybody's working and, and nobody's stuck and you know, help folks out along the way. We have a scheduler. This is a fairly new persona here at ServiceNow. Uh, we, we've had schedules for things like changes and all sorts of other things on the application, but we've never really had shift management. And we noticed that without that data in service now, we're really missing a key piece there as to you know, how can we refine when we assign work to people or making sure people have enough time in the day to do the work that's on their plate. Uh, this also helps you know, the, these agents who are probably doing that scheduling, again, on an Excel sheet somewhere or on some sweet program built in 1987, like I mentioned, that is a true story. We did see that, uh, but um, having this on the platform, I'll, I'll kind of give you a brief peek at what this looks like is, is a huge game changer. And then we have the coach. Sometimes it's the quality management team as well. This is the person that helps onboard agents, helps onboard team members, looks for the training materials that are gonna be beneficial and, and, and maximize you know, the skill growth on the team. And they're also looking at the work that the team is doing and offering up uh, opportunities and advice and coaching to improve that work, right? So this is a, a really key person here. And, and sometimes, you know, these teams aren't afforded to have a person in every one of these roles. Sometimes it's one person doing all these jobs. But the way that we've built the product, this can be multiple people all focused on their area of expertise. Finally, you actually have the, the agents, the employees that are doing the day in, day out work. But Again, making it easy for them to see their schedule, manage their schedule, uh, see the coaching and training that they need to do. And really importantly, something we learned is that a lot of these agents don't have visibility into the metrics that they're being, uh, I don't want to say judged on, but you know that, that they're being measured against, I should say. And so bringing that transparency and so an agent sees, hey, here are the KPIs I'm looking at with my manager. I'm going to see the same data my manager is seeing. And I'm going to be able to monitor and work towards improvement of these KPIs. So that's kind of the, the, the high level, you know, the, the personas and the groups that we solve for here uh, with workforce optimization. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and get right into product because that's what I love to do. <laughs> and again, I don't, I don't want to take a ton of time here going over workforce because I will. And Dan will stop me and never invite me to one of these again. Uh, but at a high level, this is the product here and, and how it surfaces for the manager is in the new manager workspace. Now, just like the process optimization workbench or the process analyst workbench, this is all built in UIB, which means it's totally configurable. It's all on the new Polaris UI. It's beautiful and it's really nice and easy to use. So that single pane of glass, again, that's, I love saying that here at ServiceNow, uh, but giving the manager and all of those individual personas exactly what they need to see to do their job. So here, a typical landing page or a dashboard, totally configurable. We ship something out of the box that everybody can use. But you can see a lot of KPIs, a lot of you know uh, monitoring of how a team is doing. 
but I still need to drill down and kind of get more information if I want to know what's going on behind them. If we look at those different personas that I talked about, the team lead or the dispatcher, they're going to be focused on channels. What's coming into the team? How can I allocate work out to the team and make sure that I have the right folks working on the right things? Now, that can be <laughs> reading tea leaves or you know, looking at a crystal ball for a lot of folks today, and they just know these teams inside and out. But that's a tricky thing for one person to manage. And if that person isn't available for a day, that's a lot of uh, tribal knowledge. So we're trying to bring this into the system so that you can see, hey, are these people available right now? Do they actually have capacity to work on something? Do they match the skills that are required for this, this work item? And what's the rest of their day look like? Do they have eight hours more today? Are they logging off in an hour? Right, so all of this information can really help that dispatcher make sure they get that work to the right person at the right time. Speaking of time, this is where we're talking about the new scheduling capability. Now, this is, uh, again, it's something new to, to ServiceNow. We've had on-call scheduling for a long time, but this is really shift management and scheduling your team against the demand coming into your desk, right? So here, here at the top, you can see when people are scheduled and what the demand is. You can filter this out and look at folks that have a particular skill. If you know you need you know, French coverage for your folks in Quebec at a certain time, I can pare down and just see the folks that speak French and make sure that they're gonna be here at the right times. And I've got you know, four people that can manage that. So this is a nice, flexible, extensible way to look at when your teams are, are on, look at the coverage that you need and uh, 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 you know, make sure that you've got everybody in here that you need working at the right times. Uh, if we're moving on here to schedule the work scheduler, this is a brand new capability that just came out in August, but this is the ability to look at all the work. Again, maybe you've got automated assignment happening with advanced work assignment for chats and for phone calls, but if you still have to do manual assignment for long-term work, maybe incidents that are gonna take a few hours or change requests, this is a way that you can actually do that manually, but again, with a lot of that information at your fingertips. So. If I'm looking at unassigned change tasks, I can open up these records. And as you can see here, I can click and drag to assign this to somebody right on the calendar. Now, this is so cool because I can ladder that work up against someone's schedule. Oops, I got that in the wrong place, right? This person's coming in later today. I can make sure that they've got their day kind of scoped out for them, uh, a lot, uh, allocate enough time for them to do this work and kind of manage the whole team and all of that queue right here on the calendar. And this can have skill recommendations and show you capacity right here to see everything that everybody's working on all in one shot. All right, I'm, I'm trying to go quick here. <laughs> I can talk about workforce, but- You're doing, you're doing great. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, this is where, this, this module here is the team performance module. Now, this is where we're, we're gonna lean on performance analytics, right? And like, as Dan said, these aren't integrations, these are in-platform connections, right? Where we're taking the value of performance analytics and those great indicators that you're working against and all the breakdowns that you've built. And now we're gonna put it in the context of the manager who's managing these teams, right? I'm sure you've all built dashboards and the managers can go in and filter them. But really what we wanna focus on here is what kind of teams are, are we managing and what does this manager care about in, in the context of their team? And we always start from that context, right? So here, right away, I'm seeing these two teams that this manager manages. Maybe they're a peer manager for desk side support and there's another manager, but they wanna be able to see things and compare side by side. And then I'm seeing these five KPIs here. Now these are top level KPIs that we ship out of the box, but you're probably pretty familiar with for a service desk, right? Average handle time quality, how many incidents are they closing, first call resolution, customer satisfaction. These are things that, you know, you might have global teams, you might have 15 different teams working to, to provide service to the enterprise, and they might all be using their own dashboards that they built. There's a way to bring consistency to reporting across the board and really kind of level that playing field so everybody sees at the top level, here's what we care about. And the beautiful thing about this is now I can drill down into this team. I might be able to see things that don't don't look the way I'd like. Maybe the quality could be higher or you know, average handle time could be lower. But when I drill into the team, I can now see those high level stats again, those same five KPIs. And then I see them down here broken down by all of the agents. Now, this is pretty cool. I'm not just looking at one KPI at a time. Again, I'm looking at the whole picture. And that's really important because you can get 
biased if you're looking at one thing. You might say, hey, this person has the highest MTTR, what's going on? Oh, they've also closed only two incidents compared to everyone else. Or, oh, their average CSAT is higher than everyone else's, but it's taken them a little longer. So again, it gives you a little more context around what's going on in the, in, in the team's kind of world. And if I drill down farther, let's say I just want to look at the average handle time. Now I can get even more context with supporting KPIs. So I can see, all right, here's the average handle time for Alberta. And what's going, why is it so much higher? Oh, it looks like her, her P4s are higher than everyone else's. You know, and actually the whole team's P4 is higher than, ever, than, than all the other priorities. You know, let's drill down. And this is again, where I want to get that why behind the KPI that Dan, Dan always mentions. But now that I drill down in here, this is to me, one of the most promising, you know, things that we've got going on right now with, with process optimization being embedded here. So now for these records, for these P4 mm -hmm. records for my team for this time period, I can have process mining tell me the insights, give me the findings as to what's going on here. I can also see variation analysis to see, okay, of all of the records that are making up this metric for this team, in my context as a manager, what's going on? What's the process? And I can see really quickly like, oh, these things are not going through the process that I, that I would expect. We've got things going right to resolve and right to close and these things are taking a long time, right? And so again, from that context of the team to the KPIs that they care about and being able to drill all the way down into those records and say, let me see all the P1s and see what's going on with the process on my team for P1s. Not only can I browse all the records that fit that, those 115 records, but again, that process analysis can take place right here in the context of those KPIs that I'm looking at. So really, really powerful capabilities. And you know, this is really, you know, Dan, you had that iceberg uh, uh, graphic earlier, but I'll take that analogy and spin it another way for us. This is the tip of the iceberg on this capability. This is the very first time we're connecting these two things. And we see this as a huge area of growth, right? As you can tell, we're kind of buried the capability behind a tab when you drill down. These process insights, we're gonna be pulling these up to be on that landing page of the manager, pulling these up to be here on the team so we can see these things without having to drill down, right? For our first passes, let's find out the why. Why is something not going so well? But soon we want this to be a lot more proactive where we're really surfacing these things without having to, to dig in and, and try and figure out what's going on. But again, this is a, a really powerful connection for this team manager trying to figure out what's going on with their numbers. I'll just chime in real quick, Andy, on this one, because, and I know some of you have heard me tell this story before, but I, I've been in the, the business intelligence and analytics space for about 25 years now. I mean, one of the reasons I initially joined ServiceNow is that I wanted to work for us a, a, a company that provided in-platform analytics because Gartner puts out this number and it's been the same for the last 25 years of, of business intelligence and analytics adoption inside of organization. It's always hovered around the 20 to 35% range. And that's because your, your, your traditional approach to, to business intelligence analytics is it's a third party tool. Um, and, and usually you're, you're, those solutions are used by the people in the corner office. They go to their dashboards and they use that. But to get the most value out of your data um, and the analytics solutions that you're providing, you need to put it in the flow of people's day-to-day -day lives, the people on the front line, because you want the numbers to influence those frontline behaviors because those frontline behavior changes are the things that move the needles at the top. I mean, that's We've, we've got that ability here to not only with, with what you're doing in the workspace, right? You're putting it in the, the, the information and the and analysis in the flow of these people's day-to-day -day lives. And that's, you know, we're surfacing the process mining capability there as well. You just don't, you don't get that with third-party analytics or process mining solutions, right? You, you don't get the same adoption levels that you're going to get uh, as, as we do when you put the stuff in, in the solution where people work and, and on a daily basis. That's exactly right, Dan. It's, it's all about that flow of work, right? And, and when we were showing this solution to folks early on, they said, this is great. What do I do about it? You know? And that's the beauty of when you put this information in the flow of work is when we go back to that, that coaching use case, right? There's a big part of this product we haven't even talked about yet, which is, okay, I found Anita. I found these 11 P1s that don't look so good. You know, I'm going to open one of them up and see how she did. 
And I can look really right now in the workspace and obviously see the incident. I can see SLA information or any other data that she may have put in here. And if I see something where Anita could have improved, I can take action right here, create a coaching assessment, provide that feedback, right? Whether it's through a survey or, or, or whether it's just kind of a form where I'm saying, hey, this looks good, but next time try and do this. I can score that work, right? And really start driving towards that continual improvement providing training, assigning courses, assigning skills, right? And, and closing that loop. Because like you said, if I'm looking at a, a dashboard on a third-party system and I find something like, I can't connect that finding to action that's gonna make it better. And that's what the beauty is here is we're, we're closing that loop and uh, kind of pulling it all together so that as you find these things and as you're being proactive, you've got something to do about it. I love the coaching example. That's. Uh... For those of us that are on future calls, you've probably heard us talk about this in the past, but very often when we're thinking about using process optimization to find opportunities to improve, like our minds immediately go to using like uh, the virtual agent or predictive intelligence or some form of automation to improve the process. Um, but sometimes the improvement is something as simple as just coaching somebody to do the job a little bit differently, like a human change of behavior. Or <laughs> um, it, sometimes it's just, Hey, we see something in in you know in the map of the process that we've mined that we should just stop doing. Yesterday, uh, I was a, a snug up in in um, uh, down in Philly, I should say. I was in Philadelphia, and one of the presenters was talking about how they saw an opportunity. They had two levels of approval on somebody needing or requesting uh, printer toner ink. I was like, "Do you really need two <laughs> levels of approval on?" toner ink. And so they just saw that. They saw that the, the time that was bucketed up in that approval um, and they're going to remove those approvals. <laughs> more efficient process to get your toner ink. I can see that. I can see the GL line now, Dan. Uh, toner toner <laughs> prices, toner costs have gone through the roof. <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly right. You know, it, we all know these inefficiencies are happening, right? And a lot of times we just kind of resign ourselves to say that's how it, that's how it is. And that's not good enough, right? We know we can do better and we want to, we want to encourage that continual improvement culture, right? That, that ability to constantly make things better because that's, that's got a, a flywheel effect, right? You make something better for one person and that just kind of emanates, right? And everyone starts to feel that and it's a, it's a good thing. So again, you know, being able to come in here and see these stats, break these down, correlate them to other stats, and then get that why, get those process insights. This is just so powerful. And, I, you know, you might be looking at this and saying, yeah, but come on, how much setup did this take? Like, this is crazy. This is probably years of data and years of, of you know, configuration. And so I do want to show you a little bit about how, how easy we've made this uh, and then how this is not just a workforce thing. Surprise, surprise. So I'm going to go ahead and end uh, being a manager. I'm going to go into my system administrator uh, uh, boots here and just show you real quick a little bit about workforce optimization and something we've uh, identified as KPI groups. Now, these KPI groups are, are what allows you to do that correlation between indicators, and they allow you to associate certain teams to certain groups of KPIs so that you're not traversing one dashboard for all your teams. So you're not, you know, every team having the, the, these different kind of views on the data. So if we look at a single KPI group, let me see here, I got the, the wrong view here, but there we go. These are gonna be all the KPIs that you care about for these teams at the highest level, right? That's the simplest way you can look at it. But now if I look at these top level KPIs and just show all of these, here are those five KPIs that we saw in the workspace, right? All these are, are references to indicators that you're already using in performance analytics, and then the ability to give them a nice, uh, a nice label, right? And the ability to associate other KPIs uh, un that underpin, right? Or that give you that, that, the, that correlation, right? So if we look at quality, for example, great, I might see a 100% quality score, but that might only be based on one assessment, right? And so it's good to know, hey, is it 100% based on 15 assessments, it's kind of like looking at baseball stats in the beginning of the season when somebody's batting a thousand, you go, oh yeah, this is the second time they've been up to bat, right? So getting that, that, that correlation really helps you understand the why again, and then give me that process that's sitting behind this, right? 
So when we get into that process piece, that's where this has been made just super, super easy. Right here in the indicator uh, KPI configuration, you can define an indicator source for your formula indicators. And this is what process optimization and mining is gonna look at for what records should I mine in correlation to these indicators, right? If it's a, if it's a formula indicator, you know, it could be based on a couple of indicators. So you gotta, you gotta define that. If it's not a formula, formula indicator, it's automated, something straightforward like closed incidents, we don't need to define that because we can go right to that source. But once you have all this wired up and this is all basic platform configuration here, all you need to do is click one button, initiate process mining. We'll go through and look at all these indicators, look at all the sources, go start mining those records and all of your managers after that mining's done, which I'm sure you've seen Dan show this off that mining is you know, a matter of minutes or maybe hours at times, but it's not anything that, you know, like a typical process mining situation where you're waiting months and months and months to get any insights. This is all on platform happening real time. And so as soon as that, that process mining uh, is done, it shows up there on the workspace for the manager. Now, again, we're trying to make this as easy as possible. We've seen folks implement this within an hour on the phone with them, uh, just getting started and they go, ah, there it is, it's working, right? So again, leaning on those capabilities that the platform already has and making those connections for you so you don't have to go build models and associate models. We just say, we'll do the model work for you. All you need to do is click this button. We're making it really, really easy to use. Now I mentioned earlier, hey, you know, KPI groups isn't just a workforce thing, and uh, you know, other products that sit in in uh, in my group are vendor performance management, which you may be familiar with, but it's a bit the ability to see all the vendors, the IT vendors that provide services, hardware, software, anything for your for your organization, and monitor their performance based on service availability, you know, uh, vendor satisfaction scores, anything like that. Well, those all those uh, Indicators, we actually use KPI groups there to associate specific indicators to specific types of vendors. Well, you can probably see where I'm going with this. A real fast follow to our workforce integration is to be opening this process optimization integration up so that now you can see those insights on the vendor manager workspace. Continue that, we've got digital portfolio management. If you haven't seen this yet and you, you offer services and offerings to your end users, check out digital portfolio management. It is the one-stop shop for service owners, solution owners to see all of the services, all the applications that they own, see how you're planning for them, how you're building on them, how you're running them, how they're performing. Well, guess what? For that performance piece, we use KPI groups. And so those solution owners, those service owners are gonna have those same insights from process optimization. So when I talk about the tip of the iceberg, we're really just getting started with how process optimization provides insights to these, these other personas outside of the analyst persona. And we wanna put these insights in their hands so they can take action and drive that continual improvement. So, you know, again, just getting started here, lots of exciting work and an expansion of, of, you know, how KPI groups and how process optimization can augment uh, the, 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 the understanding and the analysis for uh, all the IT personas. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the, the foray into that connection. Andy, uh, uh, one of our, we have a question that came in and, and you may know the answer to this since you were involved in kind of putting the product together. Someone is asking, and it's Phil, good, that, glad that you made it, Phil. Uh, instead of calling things KPI groups, why not have, why not have KQI groups, uh, which uh, in Phil's head is a, a roll up of KPIs. Uh, was there any thought behind kind of the, the naming of KPI groups? Is it, I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, you know, one of the things you hear in software is the hardest thing about software is naming. Um, <laughs> and I can attest to that. Uh, KQI group. No, I mean that we, we talked about uh, uh, KQI. We talked about uh, what, what's the other one that, that well, first off, we wanted to start with just indicator group to just keep it as basic and simple as we possibly could. Yeah. Um, but that name was already taken. And so we said, okay, what about KPI groups? And so we, we you know, there wasn't a lot of science behind it, I'll admit. Um, no, but I do, I do like that. And, and this also kind of gets into the world of OKRs, right? And, and really when you're looking at, 
those super metrics that that tell you that picture from the top and then the ability to drill down into those and again see that correlation um, but no I, I love that idea of kqi and um might might start borrowing that for for these presentations <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah Cool. Yeah, I mean, anything uh, else, or should thing, we open it up for questions? Yeah, I mean, the last thing I'll show that I didn't didn't get to do is the coaching module. We talked a little bit about creating those ad hoc assessments, but you know, last shameless plug here: coaching is a lot more than just quality assessments. We've integrated uh, uh, into third-party learning management systems like Udemy, Pluralsight, uh, uh, Cornerstone. Right, so we realized that the IT group can't create all of the coaching material that they need, especially as the needs of these teams are growing, right? Teams are needing to learn new technologies. They need to learn about the cloud. They need to learn about, you know, new capabilities that they haven't had to do before. And how better to do that than pull in great partners like you to me, Pluralsight, and be able to assign those courses in the flow of work. So that's exactly what these are. You can create internal and external learning courses. You can create libraries at a, as a manager. You can assign these courses out and you can even create paths. So let's say JavaScript is something you really need folks to work on. You can create a JavaScript path that's got multiple courses in it or ITSM fundamentals, right? Any of these kinds of things. And I can assign these out to a whole group or specific people on the team and mark a due date that I want them to have this done, let's say by the end of the month, right? And this is gonna now, this is a 50, 50 minute path of three courses that they can take. And I can assign these right here. And now again, this isn't just gonna have it go out there. They have to watch the videos and then that's the end. No, by the time they're done watching those videos, they're gonna get skills associated with those videos and they're gonna get to complete that. Now you've all got your process optimization hats on. So you're probably thinking, well, there's a whole other process behind how people learn and what this, this looks like as well. So, you know, lots of opportunity there. The assessments piece, uh, obviously we talked about that, but we've got several different kinds of assessments. And then the last piece, one of my favorite screens on here is the skills matrix, where you can see all of the skills that your team is working on, all of the folks on your team, and at what level each person has that skill. And then even recommendations based on the work that they're doing and the similarity of the text in that work to the similarity of the text in the skill, where we can say, hey, it looks like Lakita has been working on Linux incidents. Let's look at that recommendation. There's you know, 20 incidents that she's done. And I wanna go ahead and assign this to, to Lakita. I know she's been working on this. Or I'm gonna go assign some learning that she can use to get this skill officially so that she can uh, you know, do a better job on working on those incidents, right? So this skill matrix is really a, a super unique view into the skills that my team has the skills that my team needs and, and, and are growing. And again, if you're thinking about process optimization, you think about career growth and, and learning paths, right? Like what is the typical path of an agent that comes onto the, their team? Maybe they learn a bucket of skills first, and then there's another set of skills and another set of skills and using process optimization to see and un, uh, uh, uncover those paths can start to recommend things for the manager that say, hey, these, this group of people, They've got the skills for, for L1 down. They're ready to go to L2. Let's start assigning some of those other tasks, right? So again, tip of the iceberg, so much opportunity bringing these two uh, mm -hmm. products together. And uh, again, that end goal of developing high-performing, engaged teams that deliver excellent ESAT for your employees uh, in, the, in the org and, and just delivering that excellent service uh, and giving the manager everything they need to, to make that happen. Cool. I'll, I'll invite people to put questions into the, uh, uh, Andy, I'm assuming, do you have anything else you have to show? Oh, ready? I could go on and on uh, and on, Dan, but I better stop myself. So. <laughs> I'm going to invite, I'm going to invite people to put questions into the Q and a, uh, portion here. Um, we'll go through these and we'll get to the questions section. Anybody have any questions for Andy regarding, um, workforce optimization and any of the stuff that you saw there? I actually, I, the, the last piece that you showed there, it was a nice, you showed one, a part that was an actual integration with something outside of service now to get the, that course information in. And I, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to add a process optimization essentials now learning course to your demonstration for future. There you demos. go. 
Um, and then an uh, in-platform connection, I'll call it, with the predictive intelligence to show the similarity or using the similarity framework to show the, the recommended skills. So an in-platform um, connection with a capability that we have already. So that was cool to have both a real integration and an in-platform connection in the same screen. Anyone have any, any questions uh, for Andy? Please put them in the Q&A. Um, and if not, I will say if you have any process optimization questions that you came here or you brought with you today, uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A as well that are beyond anything we've done with workforce optimization. But I do want to take advantage of the fact that Andy is here with us and can answer those other questions. Uh, if you want to kind of chime in and say something, I, I, I'm going to start going through and clicking this allow to talk button on everybody if anybody's interested in asking their question live or just saying hi. Yeah, and, and you know, if I can maybe prompt if anybody has any other thoughts on, you know, bringing these process insights to other personas within IT or, or outside of IT, um, you know, how that's done, how you think people would react to those kinds of insights, what kind of insights would be valuable? Um, you know, we're taking all input right now to, to you know, drive towards the best solution possible. So I'd love to hear it. I'm not seeing any questions come in. I'm gonna give you other, other folks chances to ask them. Uh, for those that this is your first time um, and you're saying, hey, I wanna learn more about process optimization, a couple of things. Uh, one, there is a now learning course that is going to be in Andy's future demos called Process Optimization Essentials. It's self-paced, about 90 minutes, but if you do it at 1.5 speed, you can get it done in 60 minutes. Uh, recommend you taking that. And then Process Optimization is available for you to turn on in your sub-production instance and take a test drive. So the, the plugins that you're going to want to activate there are going to be the Process Optimization plugin. Um, as well as uh, one of the content packs for the solution that you're using. So you know that Process Optima is available for ITSM, CSM. Uh, as of Tokyo, it's available for HR. And in November, it'll be available for App Engine as well. So there's going to be content packs out there for the given solution that you're going to want to activate to get you some of those finding cards or insights. You know, as, as Andy drilled into process optimization on uh, on the screen there, you saw some insights pop up. Uh, those insights come as part of these prepackaged content packs that we offer across the different solutions. Um, so there's a whole session on the, the um, finding definitions and insights cards uh, if you want to go back and learn a lot more about them. But you're going to want to turn on both of these plugins for the solution. In terms of other resources that are out there and available to all of you, we've got that on-demand training. There's a great now on now white paper out there talking about how we've rolled process optimization out here at ServiceNow and sharing some insights across five or six of the different workflows on um, which we've identified opportunities to improve and the findings that are there. You've got a really great article written by our chief analytics officer, VJ Kotu out there on Forbes. It's talking about the transformative power of process finding on employee experience. If you found this session, you probably found it via the community form. So uh, there is a specific form just for process optimization. If you have questions above and beyond things that we've covered in any of these sessions, or you just want to kind of get some insights from others using solution, feel free to go and post there. We check it every single day to you know try to provide you timely answers to your questions. There were three knowledge sessions this year. All those recordings are available and posted on that same community form. And then if this happens to be your first time, you're saying, I would love to watch a recording of how to get started with process mining on the platform or process optimization. We did a live on now session called getting started with ServiceNow's in platform process mining. We walked through kind of high level what and why of, of process mining 101 type stuff. Um, and then we go to configuring your first model uh, on the platform and running it. So it's a really nice way to help you get started about a 45 to 50 minute session that's, that's out there. Last time, I'll open it up one more time for questions. Anybody? Hello, Dan. Hey. It's Philip. Hey, Philip. Um, How are you? I'm glad you can make it. Pretty good. Yeah, sorry I'm late. Um, I know that today it, it seems to be that the optimization is very focused on some of the modules in the platform, but is it going to have the capability of creating your own grouping of processes? So say, for example, if I wanted to analyze things from an idle perspective, when, when we're technically talking about ITSM, but you know, maybe I want to focus on just configuration management and change management collectively as a process. Uh, are you going to have the capability to kind of 
merge those processes together to be able to see that view? Sure. Yeah. So the, and, and you know, we'd love to dive into kind of the exact workflow that you're looking at, but if in Tokyo, um, one of the things that we did is we, we did create, or we do give you the ability now to do that, create those interconnected views. Um, so if you want to kind of look at incident going to, to problem and going to change and kind of seeing how things traverse through maybe that complete process there, um, the, the ability is to do that. As long as there's a, either a, a parent child or a reference relationship between um, the, the data behind the workflows, you're going to be able to create those interconnected views, but we obviously we need to have that uh, parent child or, or reference relationship in the data. But if it exists and there's audit data being collected for those the tables behind those processes, you'll be able to create that view. Thank you. Sure. And Phil, you know, offline we can. I'd love to schedule some time and kind of see if we can kind of play one of those scenarios out that you're thinking about. Yeah, that'd be great. Anyone else? I think I've I've given all of you the 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 right to unmute yourselves. If I haven't put it in the chat, but I, I think, and this is really, I, I they need to change this terminology. It says talking is permitted for everyone on the line now. So, so last, kind of you, Dan, to permit yes. everyone to talk. That's <laughs> really know. gracious of you. I feel really. I feel I, it's really not the best term. I like a beautiful morning. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Well. Uh, obviously, you know how to, to, to kind of get in touch with me if you need to and, and you want to ask questions, but please use the community. Uh, so today we talked about workforce optimization and process optimization and the connection between those two. Um, the next session in, in two weeks, we're going to focus on kind of tracking your findings with continual improvement management and automation center. So there's a pre-built connection on the platform for, with both of those applications. And it's really all about creating that closed loop experience from a continual improvement perspective, right? The, the idea uh, or one of the things that I think is really, really important is right, you're using process optimization to help you analyze and identify opportunities um, inside of your workflows to get better. Too often, um, we find stuff in tools or solutions like process optimization. We go tell our friends at lunch and that's where the, the insight dies, right? We really wanna make sure that we're, we're taking action, right? The, the, process, the KPIs don't move if we don't take action on the things that we find. So these two solutions and these pre-built connections help us capture the insight that we found and the opportunity, and then make sure that it gets followed up on. So we're, we're gonna spend some time talking about those solutions and kind of how they enable that um, follow-up. So we actually do improve our processes over time. So that's the next session. Uh, then the ones after that are based on feedback that we've gotten from you guys and use cases uh, that uh, some of you that have joined on a regular basis have brought to us. Right? One of them will be about kind of using process optimization and combining that with SLA data or, or working SLA data into um, a mining exercise that you're doing. Uh, then we'll talk about process optimization on the request process, which is something a lot of customers are, are starting to do. Um, and then uh, to the, the last point that we were making, we've got a session out there kind of on interpreting these interconnected process maps that are available now that we have Tokyo. So um, while they're really powerful to start looking at the process across the different parts of the workflow, um, to use the Spider-Man line with great power comes great responsibility type of thing, the more interconnected processes you start to visualize, it becomes a little bit more involved or sometimes also I'll use the word challenging to interpret and read those maps. So I always recommend start small if this is your first exposure to process mining uh, and process optimization, maybe start with a single uh, process to start looking for inefficiencies. And then as you get more and more comfortable interpreting these maps and finding inefficiencies within them, then we can graduate up to those more interconnected uh, process maps. And we'll spend some time on November 18th talking about those. So this is the Process Optimization Academy. There are tons of other great academies out there uh, on, the, on the forum for you to kind of learn. Uh, again, we're all about getting better here at ServiceNow and, and sharing and exchanging ideas. These are great other academy sessions uh, for you. With that, I'll wrap it up for this, this week. Andy, really appreciate you taking the time and coming on and sharing the workforce optimization story. Uh, it is kind of a better together scenario with process optimization. It, it exposes the power that we offer from a, an in-platform process mining perspective to a whole new set of stakeholders, which is what we love to see uh, here at ServiceNow. I just thank you for taking the time. It's really great to have you. Thanks for the opportunity, Dan. I really appreciate it. And if anybody has any questions about the rapid fire demo we gave today, uh, you know, you know where to reach us and um, 
yeah, looking forward to, to doing more of this. All right. Have a good uh, couple of weeks. See you, see you in two weeks, everyone. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thanks, Andy.